Okay, so here we have the Nucleon 4 in 24 meters, Harmony Colors, which has been loaned to us today for this demo by Mike Chilvers at You Fly for Fun. And we've had a bit of a gusty day here today. I've been flying on my Nucleon WRC 27, and already I can feel that this 24, even though much smaller than the 27 has given me a similar amount of lift. You can feel a nice bit of brake pressure when kiting and those tips engage quite nicely with the 2D steering already. So we're just going to have a little bit of kiting before we take this up for a test fly. Now if you've been following my channel you'll know that I'll be doing a lot of stuff about competitions. So I'll be testing today my RPM compared on this wing compared to my WRC and see how much different it really is. There was the Nucleon XX between the WRC and the Nucleon 4 but I feel that the XX was made a bit too sporty from what I've, I've heard and the Nucleon 4 is more back to that intermediate glider and a nice all-rounder wing. Oh yeah, that brake pressure is nice. Okay, so to make this accurate and give ourselves a uh, fuel burn after this flight, we're going to weigh us, the motor, so my pilot weight, the motor, with 5 litres of fuel in, and we are looking at 93.30 kilograms. So we'll weigh ourselves when we come back in, and I'll give you the time and we'll do the calculation for fuel burn. Clear prop! So the wind at the moment is 9 gusting 12, so easily reversible, so we should be off in a few steps. As you can see, the rises are very, very simple, which is actually quite, quite nice to see, because uh, the WRC that I fly, and I'll try and insert an image here, are very, very busy. And to be honest, for an intermediate glider, you don't really need all that business going on. You don't really need it on going on anyway, so Dudek have done a really nice job of neatening up these risers. The trimmers are set to three. We're gonna walk back and we're gonna launch this from a rosette. Doesn't need a lot, just comes up very gracefully. We'll turn. Feeling that brake pressure. It's gonna taxi now. A little bit more. Throttle, lean back, hit a break. Oh yes, that's a nice smooth takeoff. Oh wow. That climb rate. We're trimmed in at three here. And that climb rate is quite impressive. We've got tip steer lines very close to our carabiners, that's nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight into testing my RPM at different trim settings and then also speed bar. So I'm going to go trims all the way in, each individual number all the way up until we max out on the trims. Then hit speed bar. I'm going to do that into wind, downwind, take an average and that will give us a wing speed for my weight on this wing. It will also give us indication whether the Atom can keep up with speed bar, full speed bar, whether I can climb on full speed bar. If you're looking at getting the full performance out of a wing, realistically, you need to be able to at least maintain the level flight on speed bar. That way you're getting full performance out of your wing. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're just here to fly, have a bit of fun, maybe you're not so worried about clipping in a speed bar each time, but if you're looking at intermediate gliders, chances are, you might be a bit more interested in getting your numbers and pushing the envelope of your equipment now that you've got a bit more experience underneath your belt. So here are the results from that test. Just quickly before we go into this data, I want to give a big shout out to Giles Fowler, also known as Golf Foxtrot 22 here on YouTube. Because I've stolen his idea of putting these charts on screen, I thought it was a really nice way of representing the data. So we're going to look at a series of charts here. Because I'm comparing this to the Nucleon WRC 27 meter that I fly, 
Here's the first chart with my data for that wing. Now, as I've just said, I've flown into wind, downwind, took the average of the two, and that's given me my average airspeed. And I've also marked on this map the RPMs at each trim setting as well. As you'd expect to see, the increase in airspeed also results in an increase of RPM. Now what made the WRC27 quite a special wing in its day is that more speed from a higher trim setting didn't require that much more RPMs. As you can see, this chart is quite flat, with the exception of speed bar where you've got that extra 50% of speed, which would of course increase your RPM as you can see from the little tail on this chart. Now what's interesting to me is that the Nucleon 424 meter was pretty much identical in speed. The difference being, to get that higher end speed, it required about 3 to 400 RPM less, which isn't something to be sniffed at. And I'll be honest in saying, when I was flying the Nucleon 4, it did feel more lifty for the amount of RPMs required, so it was a noticeable difference. Now because these are just charts chucked out by Google Sheets, it's quite hard to scrutinise the data with a fine tooth comb. However, if you have this data, you can then compare it to other wings that you test fly. And it's also a rough guide of where your most economical trim setting is. If you start noticing a peak in your RPMs and not really that much of an airspeed gain, just before where that peak begins to happen is likely to be your most efficient trim setting when looking at kilometres per litre in terms of doing a distance flight. So what's interesting to me is that at trim 13 on the WRC and trim 15 on the Nucleon 4, we're pretty much at 46 kilometres an hour. But we're at 400 RPM less indicates to me that going down a size or maybe two sizes might be beneficial to get a little bit more speed out of the trimmers and also still have that potential to climb when on speed bar. Hopefully I'll be able to do that comparison in a future video because I do believe Mike is getting in the 22 meter Nucleon 4 to try and that should make for a much more accurate review because I'll be properly in the weight range then of that wing. So let's get back to the flight and my first impressions. So my initial impressions on the Nucleon 4 is that it's very lifty, like it's very efficient. This is a 24 and you know, I'm on the lighter end of the scale for this, but still the launch is very easy. Yet to land it yet, we'll see what that's like. But you know, I like this 2D steering. I tried the Hadron 1.1 uh, last year and I really enjoyed the 2D steering on that. And my initial thoughts were that this Nucleon 4 was going to be a bit like the Hadron 1.1. Now, if I'm entirely honest, that little brake pull turns you around quite nicely. I wouldn't say it's far off, to be honest, but it's likely a bit more passively safe. Newer technology, and what it is, it's an all-round intermediate wing. These tip steering lines are right here, you don't have to reach up and search for them. So we're going to test them, a little pull, oh that is a nice turn, look at that, oh! It doesn't take much, it really doesn't take much, and I feel like the Atom really hasn't been stressed flying this at all. You know, I can still climb on speed bar, so I'm getting the full performance out of this Nucleon 4. Which is, for me, if I'm in a competition setting, exactly what I want. Now, that doesn't mean to say that you need to do competitions to have a Nucleon 4. It's an intermediate wing. Maybe you've been flying for a couple of years and you're looking for that next step up, something that's going to be nice and safe, also give you the feedback from a, a bit more advanced glider than, say, your beginner glider. This turns really nicely. That tip steer on that 2D is, oh, very nice. I'm not going to chuck it in to any wing overs. And you'll see why from one of my next videos. But initial impressions from the Nucleon is that from the tests and without doing the calculations, it's got a decent speed range. The risers are very, very neat and tidy. Although I wish I could see the magnet for the tip steering. That's what I wish. And on the ground, the trimmer tab 
it can be a bit wild, it'll go stick to your brake banks and stuff, but actually, if your housekeeping's in order and in the air, it's not a big deal because it goes where it should go. Right, time to bring this Nucleon 4 in for landing. It's a nice, gentle glide in. Ooh. I'm going to be a poor man. Just look, we're, we're really low winds now. Five, six mile an hour maybe, if that. Just don't come down. Just don't come down. What does this one do? <laughs> oh. Final pilot weigh-in. Everything's exactly the same. 91 kilograms. Time for a little bit of maths then. So we weighed in at 93.3 kilograms and we weighed out at 91 kilograms, making that a 2.3 kilogram change. You times that by 0.74 because that's the weight of fuel and that gives us a result of pretty much 1.7. We then take that 1.7 and I will divide it by my flight minutes. So that was 47 minutes, uh, a mixed range of trims, which gives us 0.036, which is our litres per minute. And then times that by 60 to give us our litres per hour, which works out to 2.17 litres an hour. So that sounds quite impressive for a two-stroke, but I want you to remember I'm on an Atom 80, so the fuel economy is going to be better anyway. And also, I'm on right at the bottom end of this wing loading. So take that with a pinch of salt, and if you do get a chance to test the nuke, do these tests yourself. But to put it in perspective of what I'm burning on my WRC 27 meter, I'm burning at trim 3, 2.49 litres per hour, and at trim 9, 3.13 litres per hour. And if you go back and look at the speed charts earlier in this video, you can sort of see where the more economical point of my flying actually is on these different wings. It's also worth noting that litres per hour isn't the be all and end all of your flying, but actually looking at litres per kilometre or litres per mile, whichever you prefer, gives you more of an accurate representation of how usable the wing is. Simply because if I sit at trim 3 burning 2.49 litres an hour, that's really good burn rate, but if I'm not going anywhere because I've got a really strong headwind, that's much worse fuel economy than someone burning 4 or 5 litres an hour, but still doing 20 miles an hour into wind. So enough numbers, more about how I felt about the wing. So as you've seen from the charts earlier in the video, I was quite surprised to find the speed was identical to my 27 WRC, which actually made this bit more of a fairer comparison between the two. Now there's quite an age gap between the two, I believe the WRC was built in 2013. Being that it's 3 square meters smaller and it's lighter fabric, it just goes to show what 8 years of technology and developments can do. The Nuke 4 really maintains that really solid on rails feeling, which gives you increased comfort in flight if you're doing like a cross country for example, because you don't want to be rocked and swayed about when you're doing long distances. You want to be able to set your trims, probably go hands off, keep your airspace checked and not have to worry about that wing so much. But here's the thing. If you wanted to throw that nuke around, you really could. I really like the 2D steering and it gave you quite a precise feel and it's quite a firm brake pressure as well. Compared to my WRC, which is a little bit softer, it was quite a refreshing feeling. Sticking with the theme of controls, the tip steering are really nice, they turn you on a dime, but I do wish that you could see that magnet. So when you want to stow those tip steering toggles, you can do it quite quickly without having to kind of hunt and find the magnet just by feel. It, I think you'd probably get used to it, but it was just like one of those little things. 
having said that, the risers are very clean now. Dudek in the past have been known for having quite busy risers compared to, say, a brand like Ozone. But actually, they've done a really nice job of cleaning up these risers. And you can see everything that you're looking for straight away, which can only mean you're going to get set up and flying a lot quicker. The launch characteristics from Dudek have definitely been improved. The WRC, you need a really positive forward launch to get that wing to fly. That wing just comes up without any problems. So as a whole, it seems like Dudek have really improved on some of the stick points that people have had with their gliders in the past. So as I alluded to earlier in the video, the reason I was flying the 24 was so I could get the full range of speed from the trimmers and the speed bar and still climb with the Atom 80. However, if you're an everyday flyer, you might not need that speed bar or might not be worried about it so much. So you might go for a smaller range wing, so most of your speed is on the trimmers themselves. I'm quite interested to try the 20 or the 22 meter to see how that compares with the 24. I'm sure they're just going to be as nice of a wing, but the performance will change and also probably the handling a little bit as well. Just to summarise then, I was really impressed with the Nucleon 4 and if you're now at an intermediate level of flying, I really can't see why you'd want any more than a Nucleon 4 itself. It appears to be really solid and stable for cross country flying, it's quite efficient, very lifty and if you wanted to be a bit playful on it, it's not going to batter an eyelid at that either. So with that being said, I'd like to thank Mike Chilvers from You Fly For Fun for letting me test fly the wing. If you guys are interested in test flying that Nucleon 4, give Mike a shout. I'll leave his details in the description below and try it for yourself. Thanks for watching the video and I hope it's helped some of you out there who are looking for your next glider.